Hey everybody, I'm Yvonne Williams with Back to Earth Creations and in this video I want to show you guys one of my favorite really simplistic ways to wrap hololith or donut shaped stones like with all different sizes of insides you can use shell, gemstone, polymer clay, glass, just whatever you have um, using one of these cute little bee charms. So let's get started. Okay, so here we have um, just a couple of kind of jaspery looking donut beads. Um, I'm not going to be using these ones today because I really wanted to use this one. This is a piece that was like from an estate sale, like it was attached to a necklace but the necklace had broken. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to snip and remove the previous person's wire wrapping. Um, and uh, there'll be links down below to some of my favorite suppliers of donut and hollow lift beads. And now I'm going to come through and um, these are kind of hit or miss. I typically get them at Hobby Lobby, but there's a link down below in the video description where you can get um, like 40 pieces of this bee that has the intrigal part. So then you can layer it over like leaves or whatever kind of filigree and other stuff but these two holes right there and right there in this charm are intrigal. Um, we also have some three inch head pins. The longer of a head pin you can get the better because it gives you a lot of different options. Um, and this is I mean so simple you guys. What we're gonna do is we're gonna take the head pin and slide one through each hole on either side of the like little torso-y part. I know my friends have told me the name of this bug part before but I've forgotten. But just right through like that so it's sitting just like this. And then I'm going to thread through the hole so like on a small donut bead it would just be through the hole like that and it gets it to sit like this. But on this um mother of pearl slice. I'm just going to bring it through and I'm kind of pinning it to where it's close up as close up to the edge of the hole as it can be and bending it around with my fingers. And now I'm going to take <clears throat> excuse me one of the head pins and bend it around to feed through the back. I'm going to use my bent nose pliers to um, kind of cinch down and through, kind of pinning it into place. And then I'm going to do that same thing here on the other side. Normally I use a softer um, wire than this. This is pretty springy, so it's fighting me. But um, if you can manage it, go with dead soft. But these are also like hypoallergenic, nickel free uh, head pins, so they're like stainless steel. Which is a little harder to work with, I think. But totally worth it. So now we have that cinched down, and I prefer to do at least two wraps on each side. So now, so now that we have it more or less grounded in place, just pushing up from below. There we go. Once I get enough to grab onto with my pliers, that's what I start doing to save my fingers using my fingernail to guide it to make sure it lands right next to each other because you don't want those like overlapping you know and I'm going to do the same thing here on the other side in this way you've got it really nice and snug I'm going to use my round nose pliers to put just a little bit of a curl into this that way as I feed it through that loop it'll be more inclined ouch, <laughs> to kind of travel up in the direction that I want it to there we go nope almost oh you're fighting me <laughs> put a little bit too much of a curl into it it keeps guiding off in the other direction there we go Okay, so now that we have that feeding through, 
Can I grab it with my pliers again? And just keep pulling it down. And this one really wants to lay on top of the wire next to it, just because it's not a very large loop that I'm trying to cram everything into. So it's going to take a little finagling, but you've got it. Okay, so now I'm going to come in here with my flush cutters. And I'm going to snip as close to what I'm working on as I can. Oops. I'm going to try to hold on to my wire, that way it doesn't ping across the room. Okay. And now again, using my bent nose pliers, I'm going to kind of tuck those bent parts behind the other wire wrapping. Smoothing it down and kind of making sure that there's no possible way that it could snag the Skinner clothing. And so that's how that's sitting. And now you can see here too, it makes a perfect little hole right here at the top, Oop, right there, that if you wanted to put this on a strung necklace, you can thread a piece of filament or wire or you know whatever you're using as your threading material through right there, and it will just sit in line with everything else. But I'm going to show you all how to attach a bale. Um, that way this can just be a standalone pendant. So let me grab a couple of rings. So here I have some 18 gauge 1 fourth inch nickel silver or German silver. Uh, and you know, I think I only need maybe one or two. I'm going to keep those up just in case. Um, I'm going to rummage through my beads here because I think I've got a really cute little bead that will make a great veil for this. But I could be making that up. And in which case, we'll figure something else out. Because when I'm on this design, I really like using. Um, you know, and the more I'm looking for it, the more I think I don't have it either. There you are, maybe. <laughs> Part of the perk and problem of having quite so many beads is it can be difficult to find exactly what you're looking for. Here we go. I have some nice, like, brassy crow beads that have a very large hole in them. That was not exactly what I was trying to do. I had some in the past, though. I know where they are. Dirt. Okay. Ouch. <laughs> Thanks, you guys, for being patient. So here is one of my favorite bead storage organization for whenever I'm on the road because it's just a bunch of little compartments, but I don't know how many times we've spilled this and broken containers and it's still okay. These are what I was looking for. So they're similar to that gold crow bead that I pulled out, but they do have a much larger hole. And let me rummage just a little bit more because I think I have some in brass. But this way I have some beads with me, you know, on the road. Nope, all I've got left are the copper. But I think that'll be great because I'll just make it multi, multi gemstone. Okay. So the way that we're going to do this, and you could use, I mean, all sorts of things for a bale. So you're going to open up your slightly larger ring, slide that through because you want the ring to be big enough to be able to fit that bale on it. And now we're just going to fit this 
right in that little spot and close you want a nice good closure on the ring that way you don't have to worry about it snagging anything or coming apart and that still gives us plenty of room to be able to thread a chain or a cord through that bead and I really like that multi-metal tone effect so again just some different ideas something else that you could do I'm gonna open that up and take that bead off if you don't like the multi-tone effect I'm going to grab these are 18 gauge 1 4th inch Here I have some 18 gauge 1 8 inch, and there'll be links down below where you can purchase these. And this one, the very small one, I'm just going to take it and open it and hook it through right there, right where you would have threaded it. And I'm going to close it as best I can. And now I'm going to thread on two of these German silver jump rings. And I like the look of two of them next to each other more than just one because um, it give, makes it look a little bit more substantial and it mimics that patterning of the looping. And this gives us an opportunity to incorporate a whole chainmail necklace coming off the sides, which could be pretty cool. Which, speaking of which, I think I'm going to do that real quick. So I'm going to open these rings back up. <laughs> Sorry, I just I like showing you guys a bunch of different options to prove that it's like, I mean, by no means do you have to just do what I'm doing here in the tutorial or just do what you see in a pattern in the magazine or, you know, on Pinterest or something. It's The possibilities are truly endless. Okay, so I'm going to put that bead away. And I'm going to show you all how to do a real quick kind of open, airy, um... Byzantine. Maybe. We'll see what happens. <laughs> this uh, this tutorial is not what I had planned on doing. <laughs> so, like, we covered the planned part. Now I'm just having fun. So, what I'm going to be doing here then is I'm still going to have this one ring through the wires. closed as best I can and then I'm going to have a couple more rings closed yeah that's what I'm gonna do I'm gonna do helm chain if I can remember to future Vaughn please help me out here um, there'll be a link popping up on the screen um, directing you to a more in-depth tutorial exclusively on this weave but in a different ring size. So this way you can see some of the different variations. And I'm just gonna close a bunch of them. Like one, two, three, four, five, six. Let's close like 15 or 16 maybe. I don't know. Seven. Eight. But yeah, the uh, the German silver or nickel silver, as I'm as far as I'm aware, is like a um it's like copper with a little bit of nickel and zinc in it. Now, I have severe metal allergies, but this doesn't bother me. But it's definitely something to keep in mind if, if you do have metal allergies or you just want to be careful um, to just be aware. And so, I just, I love the color. It has such a warm... It's like a warmer silver, but not quite, you know, copper or gold. I've lost count. I'm just closing rings now. That's probably close enough, though. Okay. And so now I'm going to pull out another pinch of these 18-gauge um, 1 8 inch. Yeah, this was like... 
a Ritz cracker container. Can y'all believe that? It's perfect for chainmail rings. Okay, so I'm going to open a bunch of these now. It's such a beautiful day. I've got the windows open, enjoying some good sunlight, some loud traffic. You know, the usual. <laughs> but yeah, I really like the idea of the helm chain with the, the nice open circle of the shell. So I'm going to... How are you going to do this one? I'm going to hook two rings two of the large rings onto a small and I'm going to feed it through from the back where I am then going to hook one and two more rings and then I'm going to close it and hope that it fits because this is going to be a little snug there we go You can see how it's kind of sitting off to the sides like that. And so now I'm going to place how these two are kind of sandwiched. I'm going to sandwich another ring. Boop, right there. And with as snug as this is, this might actually be a really good idea to just put it on and close it. And I know already I went through and did the trouble of closing these ones, so I'll set them aside. Um, but I'm going to open one and hook it on one side of this center ring. And close. And then open one and hook it on the other side. And close. So it achieves the same thing. It's just a little easier, I think. Um, and honestly, even if it takes just a fraction longer, if it's a little easier on yourself, why not do it? <laughs> Keeps jumping out. Okay, so I'm going to sandwich that one again. And I'm going to hook a small through the two. These ants are driving me crazy. It's what I get for having an open window right over a garden bed. <laughs> Because the ants are like, hey, is there anything to eat in here? And I'm like, no, go home. <laughs> so this is making a pretty stiff weave, though. But I think it's all right. And that's how I'm just going to finish it off. I mean, just a short little section before I attach some chain and finish off the necklace. Now, if I didn't want this as snug... I could use a slightly larger ring size. I'm pretty sure I could accomplish this with a um, 18 gauge 3 16 in place of the very small ring. So it's this took off in a little bit of a direction uh, that I wasn't really planning. I just wanted to show you guys how to attach the bee charm, but this is how it evolves too into something you could have just left a bale on it and kept it something that's really great for beefing up your inventory. It's fun, it's simple, um, or you could turn it into a little bit more of um, a piece that showcases what you can do as an artist. Maybe with some wire wrapping coming off the top, or maybe with. Um, I mean, we could do beadwork with some pearls and shell. That might actually be what I end up doing. Um, eep. <laughs> you never know when art's going to sneak up and happen on you. Okay, so there's that. It's a little bit stiffer, but again, I think that's okay. Very cool. Okay, I'm going to put these little rings away. And um, so if you guys are here and you saw what you wanted to see, um, you know, you're more than welcome to keep watching as this kind of evolves a little bit more. But I do want to thank you for hanging out as long as you have. 
please check me out on Patreon, subscribe and all that. But I'm going to get all artsy fartsy on this one and um, enjoy myself <laughs> because that's the point of all this. So let me dig out. I don't even know where any of my beads are. <laughs> Vaughn, why do you do this? I have a whole tray of like shell beads and stuff over here. But you can see I have quite a bit of like some uh, some different freshwater pearls and pieces of coral and just all different odds and ends. So I'm going to be selecting out of here. And I'm going to be using a vintage bronze wire because I think it accents nicely with the silver and with the brass and with the nickel silver. The only thing is that this is 20 gauge and it might be a little thick to fit through some of these beads. But some of them fit. Okay. And I also, to accent the filigree work here on the back side of this one, I know I've got some uh, bead caps somewhere. Yeah. I have a couple of different styles of bead caps to choose from. And so here you can see there's the tray for this. And again, all of these will have links down in the video description um, where you can kind of browse through and shop for similar items. Most of the pearls I will be using will be roughly a six millimeter size, like four to six millimeter. Um, I'll be sure to let you know when I'm, while I'm doing them uh, which ones might compare to which sizes. How are you guys? What are you up to? And another thing that I kind of love slash hate about freshwater pearls is they can be so irregularly shaped. So that is gonna take a little bit of rummaging to kind of like find the perfect one. Okay. I'm going to see how this bead cap sits with some pearls. I think that overpowers it a little much. And this is a design element too that I feel like if I only ever did videos that were completely structured and planned, you would totally be missing out on all the brain farting and trying to find beads and, you know, just the good stuff. <laughs> okay, I decided none of my bead caps really fit. Oh no. Nope, I've got some of these teeny tiny ones. Look at how little those are. There's a big me hair in the way. So just a very little bead cap paired with a pearl. Yeah, perfect. And the nice thing too about the filigree is you can actually take it and like smoosh and shape it down a little bit. We'll do that as we get there, though. I'm going to pull that off. If these were more regular shaped or maybe glass pearls, I think the bead caps might have worked out a little bit more. But for now, I think I might just do wrapped loops, too. <laughs> All the options! Um, so, okay, let's start with something. That one doesn't fit. There we go. Kind of twisting the pearl down the length of the wire. We want to just give ourselves a, a little bit, like maybe an inch and a half, well, or lots. <laughs> About an, two inches of wire. I'm going to bend a 90 degree in my wire and then wrap a loop around like that and now keeping my pliers in that hole I'm just going to twist around one two three rotations and I'm going to come here to the other end and I'm, you can see I'm working off the spool 
I'm going to come out, you can see it's about three millimeters. So I'm going to come out three millimeters on this side as well and bend and wrap around. And then one, two, three. And right here, I'm debating if I should snip it and have it just sit like that, or if I should do like a wrap. And I like the wrap. So I am going to snip it on this end. And use my bent nose pliers to smush that down. And then I'm just going to do a wrap. One. I've recently trimmed my nails, so my fingers are really tender. Yeah, there's one. Two rotations just around the neck like that, where I'm going to snip again and smush it down because you don't want any sharp pokey bits being sharp and pokey. Especially for something like this that's a necklace. Ooh, that's so pretty. <laughs> So now I'm um, going to straighten out that wire because my hand kinks it up quite a bit. Feed through the bead. And I like that better than bead caps too, I think, especially on these natural pearls. Okay. So now with a slightly better idea of what I'm doing, I'm not going to give myself as much space here off the end. The less wire, the less wire I have to waste, the better. Though I do save all of my little scrap pieces um, in hopes of one day when we have a uh, an electric foundry, we'll be able to melt down our copper and aluminum and stuff, and who knows what. <laughs> okay, so I'm gonna bend it, insert my pliers. Do the wrap around. Wrap, 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 and then wrap around the whole bead. And then probably just two rotations. Like this is pretty secure. Okay. And snip. And a little smush. Just like that. Okay, so now let me find my other pliers. This ring that comes off the end here, I'm going to open it. And hook. Do that wrapped loop. Then I'm going to do the same thing on the other side. It's one of the downside to having good closures is sometimes you can't really find them. <laughs> there we go. Slide that right on. And jump right off. <laughs> And I'm going to close it. And so that's kind of, I tried to get a little bit of a mirror imaging there on the, uh, the way that the wrapping is done. And we can totally do maybe a little Mobius flower. And that takes three rings of each for each uh, Mobius flower. You know, I actually, I don't think I'm going to do a Mobius flower. I think I'm going to repeat the um, helm motif. Again, like, literal unfiltered thought process here, you guys. <laughs> 
Um, burp, 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 burp. How am I going to do this? Because I'd like to do just one of these segments. So I'm going to have two closed. One, two, and then two open. So let me just grab some that were stuck in there open already. And then let me grab these little rings. set that aside and so I'm going to open two little rings so here's one with these two threaded onto it and close so it's again there's infinite and variable ways that you could put together segments of chain mail it's not necessarily about how you get there it's the end result <laughs> like normally I don't say stuff like that but it's like like legit however you have to weave it however backwards and odd it might seem as long as it ends up looking like how you want it to look, that's the point. So this one, I'm kind of sandwiching in between those two. And closing. So just boom. trying to make sure to not thread through the um, aluminum ring at all, the little one. And that's it off to the side. Now I guess before I had closed it, I'm going to thread on the other end of the pearl. And so this one isn't really laying as, as tightly as I would have liked, but I think that'll be alright. It's still pretty. Okay, so now we'll have two open. So there's one and two. And then I'm going to close two so that we can have the other side match. And then I'm going to open two of these aluminum. I'm going to thread both of the large rings onto the small and close it. And then do the same thing with the other one. And now I'm going to come in kind of with the small ones on opposite ends and sandwich boop like that and close it. And I'm going to do the other one. I'm just sandwiching through those two around that aluminum ring. But this time, before I close it, I'm going to thread on the wrapped pearl. And close it. And just a cute little necklace continuing around. So now, let me see be a good spot to incorporate in some larger pearls if they'll fit onto my wire that is nope they don't want to that's not what they want to do with their life any of them mm, nope okay <laughs> And that's something is I guess I could come through with a bead reamer and really, really try to cram these through, but it's just not worth it. Sometimes you have to pick your battles. Will this one fit? That one fits! Woo! Okay. Oh, crap. I forgot to put a bead cap on there. But, so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to snip it. And since this one is significantly larger, I'm going to put on a cute little bead cap. But yeah, see how a bead cap looks much better on the larger ones. It just occurred to me, I really hope I'm in frame if you check. <laughs> but 
Eh, I hope I was. <laughs> if I wasn't, I'm so sorry. Okay, so I'm still going to give myself that like three millimeters off each end. But since everything's all kind of weird and floppy, I'm going to do both sides first. Bend and bend. Wrapped around, and then I'm going to go one, two, and three full rotations around. Before snipping that weird end, though, I'm going to do the other side. And the 20 gauge wire that I'm using um, is technically thick enough that I could just do a loop without doing the wrapping, um, but I wouldn't trust it as much. And this is something that, I don't know, I kind of like doing the wrapped loops. I like the way they look, I like the security. Okay, so you can see it has just a little bit of wiggle room, so I'm going to do like a half cinch on each side, cinching this extra wire down just a little bit more. That way um, it takes up that little bit of space because I don't want our bead wobbling around on us. My little And snip. And snip. Smush down that extra end. So you don't want any pokey bits. And I'm going to open up this ring. And just hook that on there. And close it. And now I get to hope I'm lucky enough to find another pearl that um, is roughly round-ish shaped and will fit the wire through it. And oh my gosh, I found it. And I forgot to add the... Okay. There's the bead cap. There's the pearl. There we go. So these pearls are pretty close to like an 8 millimeter size, whereas the other pearls, the smaller ones, were closer to like a 4 or a 6, and I think that's why the bead caps were really overpowering them, as these bead caps do particularly well on like a um, uh, 8 to 10 millimeter. leave that tail on there until I get done with the other side. I mean, and that's why I like to work off the spool, too, is because that saved me. I mean, granted, it was only a quarter of an inch, but when you're working with a 300-foot spool and every, you know, link that you do, you're saving yourself a quarter of an inch, that really comes in handy. this up. I'm going to slide that on and I'm going to close it. So now from here is where I think I would attach some mechanized chain. Um, 
preferably something hypoallergenic because that makes a lot of contact onto the neck. Um, but yeah, just, I mean, a bit of chain on each side, some extender chain and a clasp, and we're good to go. So this is how it came out. Sorry for at the end there that it started like deviating off camera. I had set a station up. Like y'all saw, I had it boxed off, like trying to like guide myself. No, I was like, I'm gonna go craft over here. But it's like, why? Why you do this fun? I'm working on it, guys. Thanks for being patient with me. But this is how it came out. Instead of doing just mechanized chain, I wanted to continue the uh, gemstone feel all the way around. So you can actually even see here in the back. Um, with the way that we did the clasp and things. Um, it's got a little dangly bit hanging down on either side. Um, just because I like the way that looks. And it gives it a lot of room for being adjustable. So you can see the hook will hook on either side. However short or long as we want. So it actually gives it about four inches of length difference. So it can still have those little danglies, which are ultra duper cute. I think I'm gonna make some earrings to go with it. Um, then possibly wear it out to dinner tonight. <laughs> but um, I really, really enjoyed making this. It was not planned at all, and sometimes that's really nice. Um, so if you guys have any questions, comments, or ideas, I'd love to hear from you. If you have any suggestions for future tutorials that you would like to see me make, um, I'm all yours because I do this for y'all. Like, I want to teach you guys what you're looking to learn how to learn how to do. Learn. Blah. Blah, blah. Yeah, anyways. Um... If you enjoy my free tutorials and want to support the creation of more of them, as well as participate in my fairy house giveaways, which let me grab a fairy house. I don't know why I live like this. Um, <laughs> this is the one for at the time of recording for the upcoming giveaway. Um, but if you're watching this in the distant future, hello. Um, and also, I probably have some other fairy house giveaway going on. But check it, y'all. The door opens and closes. Like, at the, again, at the time of recording, this is the first time I've done that. But I think it's going to become a regular thing because it is so fun. But um, for just a dollar on my Patreon, it puts your name in the hat to win these one of a kind fairy houses. If you pledge five dollars, it puts your name in the hat five times. And if you pledge ten dollars or more. You still get your name in there once, but you get kits or materials or gifts mailed to you every single month, which is pretty fun. And that goes for our international uh, patrons as well, So, which is really exciting. We finally hit that milestone to where I can kind of just cough up the extra shipping um, to send you something every month. So, yay. <laughs> but uh, thanks again, guys, for hanging out with me and for making this necklace with me. So, uh... Yeah, I'll see y'all in the next video. Until then, happy crafting. I love y'all. Give yourselves a big hug from me. Bye. <laughs>